Huh, Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Seek and Destroy stream. And today I'm here with Erica Luttrell, voice of Injustice 2's Cheetah, which we have the copy of the game right here. And, uh, and I'm really, really loving this game. We've been playing it for the past few weeks on my channel since it came out. And I don't play a lot of fighting games on my channel, so it's interesting to see that I have almost 10 videos of this game uploaded to my YouTube. Oh my god. Um, people are like, wow, you play, really like Seriously? this game. Yeah, but I, and they're like hours each, you know? Wow. Um, and it's just, it, it's just such a fun game. The storyline's great, the multiverse stuff, everything is awesome. Um, and we'll talk about some of the other stuff you've worked on and upcoming things. But first, I do want to talk about Cheetah. You've portrayed her before, and you've played her in the Lego uh, Batman 3 video game, Beyond Gotham. Yes. And you've played her in uh, the, Trapped, the Trapped in Time JLA Adventures DVD, which you signed for me, which was really nice of you. Because <laughs> um, I went to her as like a fanboy, like, please sign my DVD. She's like, okay, it's We're cool. Friends. We're friends, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so you've played different versions of the character, so what... What was the difference in each version you've played, and what new areas of the character did you get to explore this time around? Oh, okay. Well, uh, in the last two, so I'm going to say the first one was the the JLA Adventures okay. film, mm -hmm. and uh, she was. I mean, I've, I've essentially I played her with a different accent every time, which I thought was really interesting. Because <laughs> I, you know, I kept oh, they keep calling me back to play Cheetah. Okay, lovely. Right. So I assume it's going to be the same. So the first time it was African, and I'm like, okay, that makes sense. You know, witch doctor, whatever. Sure. Like, okay. Um, <laughs> and but then they, you know, they call me back to do her for for Lego uh, Batman three. Okay. And uh, and I assumed again it was going to be the same. No, nope, no American. And I'm like, well, that's. That's weird. Right. Okay, great, great. We're going to do that. And then... <laughs> well, like, Lego, like, I work at Lego, so it, it that seems like, although it's, I'm sure it was a Warner Brother decision, right. but I'm sure it was a partly Lego, like, oh, totally. yeah, just have her be chill. Just, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, Lego's very chill, and right. it's super funny. Like, right. so it's a lot of tongue-in-cheek stuff, right. uh, and so that was a pleasure to do, but also very different, you know, because you're not playing her with the sort of level of maliciousness that you would understand her to sure. have. Um, and then, now this time in Injustice, uh, I've played her British. She's like from the British Isles, the sort of like the more right. classic version, the sort of Barbara Ann Minerva version right. of her. Barbara Ann Minerva, um, who first appeared in Wonder Woman number seven okay. by Len Wein and George Perez, yes. which you can find uh, the Gods and Mortals um, graphic novel has nice. her first appearance. So, anyway, so, um, so, so yeah, so so now Britishy, and mm -hmm. and then also uh, a little darker, right? So I've got to kind of explore kind of more of more of the origins of who she is and more of the the sinister vibe. Yeah, she's mean in this game. Yeah, yeah. Now you've done voices before. You've been in live action performances as well. You very. A lot of range. Like, I see you in everything, which is great. Like, every time I see you show up on something, I'm like, yay! Like, this season you're on iZombie, which is a show I love. But you were also on the 100th episode of Arrow, and you fought uh, Supergirl and Flash. And you've lasted more longer than most villains do against Flash, because he usually beats so people... Funny to me. Yeah, he, like, really? he beats people in, like, three seconds, or he can. It um, felt like it went real quick. But <laughs> it was, like, 60 <laughs> seconds. I timed it. it was, that's a long time against Supergirl and Flash. Okay, all right. Um, cool. So... You know, do you do you have like a process, like a set process, or is each role offers opportunities for an evolution in your process? I have a, I mean, as as an actor, as a performer, mm -hmm. I do have a bit of a process that I go through when I, I mean, I read the script, I explore who the character is and how what experiences I might have to have had in order to drive me to this point. So okay. it's a very extreme character if it's a sort of um, someone like a, a cheetah, for mm -hmm. instance. Obviously, she has. She's not very nice. Um. <laughs> What's on tap today, Minerva? Hmm, I have a taste for canary. You're gonna go home hungry. <laughs> she's, uh, she's pretty darn mean. She's doing a lot of things. She's striving for a lot of things that, you know, I, I would have to dig deeper to understand. So I read about her. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I look at some of the comic books. I look at some of the histories that I can find. And then I sort of build a story around that that makes sense to me as a person. Right. So that it makes my performance a little bit uh, truer uh, than it would be if I were just kind of playing to whatever whatever the, the storyline is. But so it's different. So then to answer your, your uh, second question, mm -hmm. it, it's a, 
there's that process that sort of replicates itself, but then beyond that, the character that you're working with in every project is different every time. Sure. So who you would be in those instances is different every time. I've unlocked the Red's power, but I've mastered it, Cheetah. Time to give lie to the myth. I like that you pointed out that Barbara is kind of like the ultimate um, motivated person mm -hmm. to a fault, where she like obsesses over her mission or the lasso or whatever she's after Absolutely. to the point where it breaks her almost mm -hmm. as a person um, and puts her in that supervillain category. So that's, uh, that's really neat that you explore it on that level and, uh, and that the process does change. Because I, I, I imagine that was going to be your answer, but I still wanted to like kind of see, peel the layer and kind of see how you dissect it. I mean, yeah, you gotta, you gotta dig deep right. uh, to make it more, uh, to make it true. Right. That's, yeah. That's the key. You fear failing your goddess. I always find my prey. Because you are afraid. And that obviously, like you said, to your earlier point, it helps you know why she's saying certain lines mm -hmm. because of how she, what the, the story you have in her head. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a better performance and delivery of the line. So, on, so speaking of I mean, lines... <laughs> One would have, I think so. I think mean, it's great, Cheetah. Um, on April 1st of this year, which I thought was an April Fool joke at first, but quickly debunked that when I IMDb'd Funny, I didn't you. realize it was, okay. Yeah, it was pretty good. You tweeted the uh, Bring on the Girls trailer yeah. that had Cheetah in it and a couple other girls like Catwoman and Poison Ivy, and you put, I long for Amazon blood. Cheetah. I long for Amazon blood. It won't be easily obtained. And I was like, oh my god, that's such a good line. And it made me so pumped for Cheetah. So besides that line, did you have another line in the game that you really liked saying um, besides that one? Because I, I think Cheetah has a lot of great one-liners in the game. All the characters do, um, So which is a, a credit to the writers. But the performances of them are even better. Because I think some of the lines, I'm like, oh, that could have been really silly. But then the performances of everyone was great. So. Right. Was there another line that you said that, whether it's in the game or not, that you loved doing? Oh, it's hard to remember. I mean, like, you're in the booth, sometimes you're just pounding out these lines, like, sure. one after the other, especially, right. like, you're starting a fight, and it's always, like, these goading, like, all of that, which is a lot of fun. Sure. Um, but I don't necessarily always remember specific lines of dialogue, but what I do remember is actually from... Uh, the script that they gave me to audition with, which I don't even know if it made it into the final game, oh. this particular line. No. Um, I'll search for it. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to find it. <laughs> but it was just, use your lasso, Diana, on your precious flock. You know, command them to, she was like, get, I want you to use that and to find out that their desires aren't as pure as you imagine. Oh. You know, that, that uh, humans are just animals. Be ashamed to burn fur. You'll bleed before that happens. You yeah. know, and they have these sort of base desires, these needs, these, you know, right. toxic wants. Basically, obviously, she's reflecting her own right. stuff on them. She's projecting. But, right. um, you know, it's a fair point. <laughs> There's, everybody has their challenges, so it's an interesting she, she challenges. Mm, that's so good. Because I think that. any good villain will challenge their arch nemesis that way. Like, Joker certainly is challenged. Batman, like yeah. he's like, if I am this crazy, other people will be. Yeah. And Lex Luthor, same thing. So I like that she's like, no, use your lasso of truth on just pick a random person mm -hmm. and you and tell them to tell you their truth, and it'll it will it will they won't be good people. Mm -hmm. So come to the dark side. Mm -hmm. Like like it's that that temptation is so good because heroes are great at def like rejecting that temptation. Right. Time to make some changes. I live only for the hunt. But there's actually a reminder that, that line is so good. I'm going to try to find it. Hopefully it's in the game. If it's not, that's hearing it here was great. <laughs> um, but there's a, a moment in one of the animated movies where Diana is being f uh, hit with protesters outside the White House. And they're like, oh, we hate you. Like, you know, you're the worst. And you dress, you know, kind of trampy and stuff like with your outfit. <laughs> and so Wonder Woman's like, uh, this is not your real truth. Let me find your real truth. And she lassos the guy, and it's like a big, fat, bald guy. And she lassos him, and he says, uh, she's like, tell me your truth. And he goes, I dress up as Wonder Woman to feel powerful. And then, <laughs> and, and then she's like, yay! And she's like, well, don't forget the heels. And he's like, and then he has to face this mob like of everyone. And it's so cool that that moment reminds me of that. Like this guy, and it's also reflective of our times, too, where a lot of people protest things that, like you said, like with Cheetah, they feel 
they don't like about themselves, mm -hmm. and they, and they and they come out and, and protest again. Mm -hmm. So it was really really neat to uh, to hear a line like that was offered at least in the game because nice. I feel like that's a good like come Diana join oh, us yes, yeah. Come. And Wonder Woman's not an angel in this game either, mm -hmm. so so that's mm -hmm. also fun that maybe Barbara and Minerva thought she could. Yeah. Pull her fully to the dark side. There's always a chance. So good. Barbara Ann Minerva, the cheetah. Have we met before? Diana told me all about you. In my opinion, few actresses have played cheetah multiple times like this before. There's been a few, just League and just League Unlimited, but you've played the character in different versions the most times mm. uh, that I, in my research, I could find, mm. which to me makes you the definitive cheetah. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and I hope if they make... I've seen the Wonder Woman movie. It's phenomenal. Ooh. And if they make a sequel... I can't wait. <laughs> I, know, I know. It's coming out soon. No spoilers. Um, but there's... I, I hope that Patty Jenkins makes a sequel and puts Cheetah in it. And if you're out there, Patty, please audition. At least audition. I, I think Erica will nail it. So um, she knows the character really well. You're but so besides Cheetah, is there any other superhero or supervillain out there that you would like to portray? Ah, goodness. Uh, well, you know this about me, but, but I've, I've always loved the idea of playing Storm. You oh. know, it's a thing. That'd I be love a good the one. X Men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and they're rebooting that franchise constantly. Always. So, yeah. It's <laughs> Every day. Perfect. <laughs> um, and then also, uh, your character, um, Lucifer, in your um, Monomyth uh, oh. comic series. I would love to, to play that character. I mean, it's so mm. well. Well done, well drawn. It's a really compelling concept. And um, yeah, to that. I mean, I love it. I love superheroes. Ooh, I love that. You that's flattering. Them. I have, I don't write a, a ton. I write maybe like one book a year now. Like I, someone, like, category, they were like, oh, one a year. That's pretty good. Um, so I did a book called Monomyth where Lucifer is the good angel and Michael is the bad angel. And I gave a picture of Erica to the artist and said, Make Lucifer look like this, because I was like, flattering. I was like, uh, Lucifer's described as like the most beautiful angel, but I also wanted elements of storm, because I'm also thinking of it as a comic book, right. and I'm like, oh, I want someone who can command the winds, like storm. I want that to be one of Lucifer's powers, mm -hmm. and I want I want someone to be able to have like the speed of like Chitara from uh, from Thundercats, which I know you're a fan of. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. Like, I, make her make her look like Erica. So that's very flattering. Um, Maybe Patty Jenkins will direct it's flattering it. Flattering what you did. So things. Well, hey. All of the things. Flattering. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs>
60 um, seconds. Gotcha. 60 seconds, but it's the seconds. best 60 seconds like, right, fight okay. that you've seen right. on that episode and other episodes. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to like say uh, so, no, so no. nice. So it's nice. really good. Um, Erica, thank you for your time as always. You are so welcome. My pleasure. Awesome. And we'll see you guys in the future. Data wins. <laughs> Superman flies Bizarro out into space, wanting to bring him somewhere special. Somewhere Bizarro could be himself without hurting anyone else. They land on a square-shaped planet that has very different gravity from Earth, a bit backwards in its physics, which Superman felt would be perfect for Bizarro. Bizarro doesn't seem too happy at first, so Superman offers up a solution. He knows that Bizarro wants to save people, like Superman, so he grabs a nearby rock, heat visions a face on it, and gives it to Bizarro as the first citizen for Bizarro to protect in his new home. Superman leaves, allowing Bizarro to build the perfect world for himself. Bizarro, I'm happy. Thank you, Superman.